you're enjoying Racing World, it's brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your global motorsport podcast show brought to you in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. It's that time of the week again. It's Racing World as we return with more motorsport news from around the world, featuring, of course, New Zealanders in the sport and the Gateway IndyCar event. Boy, oh boy, another nail biter as the championship gets closer to the end. It's Racing World for the 24th of August, 2022. So first up on the show, let's get straight to the news and headlining, of course, Liam Lawson making his debut this weekend as Formula One returns after its summer break. Lawson will be out in FP1 for the Alpha Tori team, and this is Lawson's debut in Formula One. Great moment for him, great moment for everyone that supported him, and I know it'll mean a lot to Grant McDonald. Uh, who's been a long-time supporter of Liam Lawson. Great for New Zealand. Once again, we have a New Zealand driver in Formula 1. And this could be the benchmark towards Lawson going even further in the sport. Let's just wait and see. But FP1, it's certainly a great deal. Had his first outing last year, of course, at the end of season test and held his head very, very high. Alfa Tori, well, it could be a place that could provide a seat for him. You just never know with maybe Gasly moving on. We just don't know. But a fantastic thing for Lawson this weekend. And as a New Zealander, very very proud to see a Kiwi back on the grid in Formula 1. Speaking of Formula 1, Stefano Dumanakali came out this week with news about the Russian Formula 1 Grand Prix. Makali, the sports CEO, said, I've always believed that you should never say never. However, when asked about Russia's chances of mounting a comeback, he said, but in this case, I promise you, we will no longer negotiate with them. There will be no more F1 racing in Russia. Then more great news for New Zealanders as three young drivers take part in the Ferrari Driver Academy test at the Sepang Circuit in Malaysia. The camp taking place over the 25th to the 28th of September. And those three, Southlands, Alex Crosby, Hayden Brackerhouse, who's also a member of the Elite Motorsport Academy class of 2022, and then one that we've caught up with many times and shows so much potential and that's Jacob Douglas. So I'm sure all three of them will hold their hair very high and this is very significant that all three of them progress through or could progress through to the Ferrari Driver Academy World Finals which will be held in Italy later in the year. Speaking of Kiwi successes, of course, Van Gisbergen knocking up more wins over the weekend in V8 Supercar and holding a great points lead now as the teams get ready for the mighty Bathurst 1000 event. All the pressure's off Van Gisbergen in many ways as they head to Bathurst and it'll let him just reign free and I think that we're going to see some spectacular things as V8 Supercars head to a date at the mountain. Then moving on to a bit of IndyCar news is Andretti Global, as they are now called, part of Andretti Autosport, announced a new 575,000 square foot race shop to be built in Fishers in Indiana. Now for those of you that don't know Indiana or the Indianapolis area, Fishers is about 45 minutes from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and probably about 20 minutes from where Andretti are currently located. It's a good area with good interstate freeway access and that's a significant thing when the teams start travelling. So absolutely amazing to see them build this facility and it'll be up and running by 2025. So as always in the States, when they decide they're going to do something, they get on with it. Now the big thing to remember too is this is not the only team that's investing in new structures or new facilities. Ray Hiller announced a new facility that's currently underbuilt in Noblesville, Indiana, which is actually not that far from Fishers, and McLaren Technology or Arrow McLaren SP, they've announced that they're working on a new development and race workshop. So there's plenty of money being invested in IndyCar right now, and certainly in team bases. And Andretti, well, they're just the latest in Boy oh boy, this looks very impressive. It almost looks like a McLaren technology centre with the lake and everything in this artist's rendering, so time will tell. Then rounding out the news this week in the driver market in IndyCar, well, the only real news at the moment is Jimmy Johnson hasn't signed. Will he sign for next year? Won't he sign? Will it be a full season or a partial season? Johnson turns 47 just six days after the IndyCar season concludes at Laguna and he remains or will be one of the oldest drivers in the series along with Elio Castroneves who's also 47. When asked about the matter Johnson just said we're still just working on putting a program together. Wish I had some updates for you all. I know I like to get 
things done pretty early in a season, but I just don't know right now. When you look at Johnson this year, he's had some great performances this year. Fifth in the second race at Iowa, sixth in Texas, uh, and then 11th in the first race at Iowa, 14th just last weekend at Gateway, and then 16th at Mid-Ohio. It's unclear just what will happen, but you know, he showed a lot of promise again at the Indy 500, and th these are all circuits that, you know, maybe suit him a little bit more. I think a lot will depend on what happens with the Alex Palau situation, and then whether that impacts on the 48 entry. It would be a great loss to the, the sport at the moment because it's a great headline act. Just imagine if two seats became available at Gennady. And just rounding off the driver market at the moment, there still seems to be a lot of chatter about what's going to happen with Daniel Ricciardo. Will he be bought out of his contract at McLaren for the rumoured 25 US million plus? Uh, or will he go to IndyCar? There seems to be some rumours about maybe he's got an interest in IndyCar. Personally, I don't think he does. And secondly, I don't think he really belongs there either. There's nothing against Daniel at all. But IndyCar shouldn't be used as a refugee camp for Formula 1 drivers. If they can't get rides in Formula 1 at the moment, there are a lot of young, talented drivers in the US and Indy Lights and the Road to Indy series that deserve to be in IndyCar. And I don't think those rides should be taken up by drivers who are looking at maybe life after Formula One options. That's only a personal opinion, nothing against Daniel as I said, and I wish him all the best. And I actually hope he stays in Formula One next year because he deserves to be there. Well, plenty going on in the driver market, that's for sure, and I think the best place to be right now is if you're a driver that's got a signed contract and you know where you stand, because if you're a driver on the outside right now, trying for any one of these spots, there are so many variables in play, more variables than I think we've seen in many, many years, and that's not a good position to be in. So it will be very interesting to see how it plays out. Alex Palau's movement is still one of the key factors into the ripple effect that then takes place. David Malukas in a Ganassi car. Now that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? But more on him in just a sec. Anyway, turning our attentions now to Gateway and first up Indy Lights. One race for the Lights cars there as they move on with their championship as well. Uh, the big thing for the for Hunter McElroy, qualified fifth, finished fifth, stays in contention for that all-important second place in the championship. Linquist and pretty much got this thing done and dusted for the outright win but the battle for second is really a three-way battle may become even four and it's Andretti Autosport teammates that are in amongst that with Matt Brabham, uh, Stingray Rob and of course Hunter McElroy in there. I think it was a good performance from McElroy on the oval, very tight and demanding, not an easy track to, to master, one of his first visits to uh, the Gateway Motorsport Complex as well and it's kept him very very firmly in this battle for second place and when you consider where he was only a few months ago I think that Hunter can hold his head very high right now and know that he is a contender for this all-important second place in Indy Lights. Onwards then to IndyCar and of course the man that broke records in qualifying Will Power, 67 pole positions for Power now, taking a great another pole position at Gateway. He is the master when it comes to this sort of thing and turned in an amazing two lap average to put himself on pole position. He's played this championship absolutely to the T. But remain calm, consistent. He's played the consistent game across the season and very, very unlike willpower that we've seen in previous years. And to me, that makes him a favourite to take this title. I just think he's going to be there come the final laps of the IndyCar season for 2022. But for qualifying, he owned it. I also spoke to him at the post-qualifying press conference because one of the things that I was interested in was IndyCar trying to rubber up the second lane to create better racing at Gateway. David Turner, we're going to try you, my friend. Go ahead, sir. Hey, thanks very much, Dave. Hey, Will, um, I was actually going to ask about the second lane as well. I was very curious to know what that was going to do in terms of confidence factor of going up that high around such a short oval. And then secondly, how much of this race becomes a fuel conservation race as opposed to others? It's sort of a bit renowned for that. Uh, yeah, the second lane, um, it's, it's actually got more, more grip up there because it's not polished, it just needs rubber. So I think just if we can get it in a bit and then people come when, you know, the 30 minutes is up and everyone else comes out, that people actually go up there. Uh, yeah, the fuel race is, if there is some yellows at the beginning, people will try to make it on a three stop and that's when it becomes a bit of a fuel race. So it really depends on when the yellows fall for that. Otherwise it's a four stopper. Well, go well tomorrow, go well tonight in the, in the night session as well, and uh, look forward to seeing the outcome. It's a great championship. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Th thanks, David.
Always great to chat with Will. He's always one for a good comment. And as I said, he's a very calmer willpower this year. Another person that we always like to catch up is Kiwi Scott Dixon. Had a pretty sort of average performance in, in many ways in qualifying. And here's what he had to say to us. Yeah, interesting day. Uh, practice was a little fun. We came here with a pretty big shift in uh, strategy of how we we're seeing the car. So it took a little while to sort that out. And qualifying, we made another pretty big shift. But uh, honestly, the car was good. I just didn't attack enough on the first lap. And then the second lap, I kind of... Uh, tried to go too deep in the tree and kind of got some understeer so ideally I think the car should have been probably where Marcus was you know front row uh, second row uh, but starting P6 is a, is a good sign spot we can definitely win from that Dixon really feeling that he could have been on the front row where his teammate Ericsson was but could have would have should have it's all very good to say but at the end of the day it wasn't too bad a starting place so to the race itself well the start time was moved forward because they thought that there was pending weather in the area, and there certainly was. Power dominated the opening laps, but McLaughlin was in amongst it as well. And it was McLaughlin that led the race up until the point where the race was halted with just a few laps to go, really, and it was halted for some two and a quarter hours. Now, when they came out of that red flag situation, and credit to IndyCar here for trying to get the whole race in, because they could have just declared it, but they chose to keep on going, and everyone bought into it. And McLaughlin led the pack away, but it was Newgarden that then took the lead, and really Newgarden wasn't to be threatened from then on in. Um, great performance from Joseph. He's won at this track more than any other current driver in the series, so he owns the Gateway track in many ways, just as Dixon once owned Mid-Ohio. Uh, the man of the moment, without a doubt, David Malukas in the closing stages, nailing off driver after driver after driver, taking in McLaughlin in the dying laps of the race, and Malukas for Dale Coyne Racing, and Sato bringing his car home fifth as well, taking a superb 2-5 uh, race results for Dale Coyne, and that's got to be just such a morale booster for that team. So Malukas became a bit of the man of the moment, but of course, you know, you can't take anything away from Joseph Newgarden. He's now very strong second place in this championship. Had the chance to catch up with both uh, Newgarden and McLaughlin. And we'll start out with uh, Newgarden's thoughts on the championship battle now racing with his teammate. Hard to say. You know, I think we're just going to race like we always do. Um, it's kind of as simple as that. You know, we race all year and we race hard. You know, it's not going to be the first time Will and I have raced together. We've had many, many races that that have been you know in lockstep one two you know pitch strategy the whole thing so i think we'll just we'll just fight it out as normal you know clearly we don't want to do something that jeopardizes the whole group because it, it is bigger than us you know at the end of the day we've got three cars in the fight still and there's nothing that matters more than putting a team penske car in victory lane as much as i want that to be me now, believe me i do and i will work to be that person we also have to just make sure we remember that it's it's about all of us and it's about all the effort we put in. We have to make sure one car secures the championship. So it's just a balance. We're just going to race like we always do. Hopefully it doesn't turn ugly at some point. And then to McLaughlin. Well, McLaughlin, he's he's proved himself on the ovals this year. Strong at Texas. He's been strong at Indy, as we well know. Second year in a championship, and he's really adapted to the ovals. So I was very curious to see how he felt on the whole thing. Uh, let's take one, David Turner. You've been patiently waiting from uh, the other side of the earth. Go ahead. <laughs> the other side of the earth is getting bigger and bigger, this place. Um, Scotty, for you, really, looking at it, I, I heard something that you said recently, and you said that you feel more at home now, and you feel at home in the US and in IndyCar series itself, and it's a place where you feel you now belong. If we go back 18 months ago, the oval racing was actually very limited for you, but now looking at the performance this year on an oval it looks like you've been on them for, for years really uh, you seem to be enjoying the ovals as much as the road courses yeah I, I think you know oval racing for me it's it's just special to be able to race an indy car on an oval and it's part of the dna of indy car racing um certainly hope there's more ovals in the future i've said that a number of times i think many others would agree with me um but I, i've just had you know i've got good teammates i've got good i've got good the team got good cars um you know it's able to for me to be able to just extract the speed and, and be really comfortable with it um, and learn quickly. And I'm very thankful for that. And yeah, I think, you know, off track life's a lot easier. I feel a lot more at home in the IndyCar series. Um, know a lot more faces. It doesn't feel as unknown even in the media and in and, and sponsorship land and, you know, even within the whole Penske organization. Um, it was a lot to take on last year. So I'm, I'm very happy where we're at right now. 
you know, watching supercars here at Sandown at the same time as watching you has been an interesting experience today. But the other, I guess, the other part that I was curious on, because of the size of the delay, which is, again is something that you haven't really come across that often, does that play into the mind or what, what do you do in terms of keeping yourself in that race mode, if you like? Uh, no, it's not that hard. You sort of just, it's kind of like a practice in some ways. You just like, you have a couple of hours off and then you just get ready to get back into it again. Um, it's just a bit more high intensity once everything gets going. But like I said before, I just don't think our car was as good once the lights come on. You know, I just, we were really hooked up and with the sun and, and um, you know, it just, it got a little loose, a lot, lot more looser than, you know, it did in the, in the daylight. So um, that's what, that's what, you know, it's all about. Unfortunately, we can't run in the rain. So uh, it's just how it is. I'm oh, really looking forward to these final two, hopefully catching up with you again in person as well. And to all three of you that are sitting there right now, congratulations. Awesome race. Really enjoyed it. So thanks very much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, David, for checking in. So it could be a case of teammate versus teammate, but as far as the team owners are concerned, it's Ganassi versus Penske, and they don't really care in many ways. They just want their car to take out this NTT IndyCar title for 2022. So looking at this run to the title, it's now Power, then New Garden, then it's the Ganassi boys, and one has to really think what's going to happen there. Dixon and Ericsson are just 14 and 17 points behind Will Power with these two rounds remaining. Dixon, of course, you just can't count him out. He knows what it's going to take to do it. Dixon said straight after Gateway, it's okay, we came out just 14 points out of the championship with two races to go. We're definitely in this. So that was a very, very strong point from him. And then if you look at the third member of the Ganassi team, Alex Palau, he's now 43 points behind Power, so he's starting to drift out of it. You've got to remember there are 53 points on grab each race weekend. That's 50 for the win, a point for qualifying, point for laps led, and a point for the most laps led. So 53 points on the table. So Alex can't really drop any further than that. And as I said, Ward and McLaughlin are still mathematically in with a chance as well. They may, of course, be eliminated after Portland, but again, time will tell. So then with just the two rounds remaining, it really is going to be a great run to the finish. It's a shame that the season finishes so early. We all know why. I've talked about it many times before. It's the clash against the mighty NFL in the US. Uh, but it would be, it just seems such a long time now till we kick off again in March. But hey, it's a great championship. It's going to the wire yet again. And as I said the other day, for the over 20 odd years that I've been covering IndyCar, it has done that every single year. So it's going to be great. Formula One kicks off after its summer break, shall we say. And there are many, many races to go in Formula One. Will this title be Max Verstappen's? Again, only time will tell. Just quickly on that IndyCar thing too, both teams, Penske and Ganassi, are testing between now and those events. Events, Penske opting to test at Portland, while Ganassi opting to test at Laguna. So they've chosen a track each, so it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. That's the last of their private test sessions that were allocated to them. So big things ahead. That's of course is two weeks time, but our focus of course this weekend will be Liam Lawson FP1 at Spa, and you'll be able to catch up with all that news again here on Racing World next week. Just as we start to wind things up, I'd like to say a big shout out to the people that wrote to me last week. Really appreciated the kind notes from you and the comments that you shared with us and the liking of the show. I really appreciate that. And it's your chance too. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the site and the Racing World show as it comes out every week. Really looking forward to the end of these championships. I think Formula One, well, it's in a, in a great place. Will this title be Max Verstappen's? Only time will tell. But as we said, all attention will be focused around FP1 at Spa this week as a New Zealander takes to the grid or takes to practice, and that's Liam Lawson for Alpha Tori at Spa. Until next week, thank you so much for watching Racing World.